Hello, welcome to the course PH6B13 E Computational Physics. The contents of today's lecture is taken from Numerical Methods for Scientists and Engineers by K. Shankar Rao. We will continue to discuss topics from Module 3 Computational Approach in Physics. In the last couple of lectures, we were discussing about how to analyze one dimensional motion using numerical techniques. In today's class, let's see how to analyze a two dimensional motion. The methodology is very similar to the one dimensional case. So, we will divide the entire range into small sub intervals, and in each sub interval, we will calculate velocity, position, and acceleration using the Euler's formula. So here just that we have an additional dimension. So for, for the sake of generality, uh, let's call that uh, the axis are x and y axis. So I have velocity, acceleration and position in x and y direction. So I need to make two sets of uh, computations each time. So if you recollect the Euler's formula, uh, the new value of velocity vi plus 1 equal to old value of velocity vi plus step size h into the old value of acceleration ai and the new value of position xi plus 1 equal to old value of position xi plus step size h into old value of velocity vi. Now I am going to write this equation explicitly uh, for x and y direction. So for the x direction, vxi plus 1 equal to vxi plus h into axi and the corresponding position equation is going to be xi plus 1 equal to xi plus h into vxi. For the y direction, vi plus 1 equal to vi pl vyi plus h into ayi and yi plus 1 equal to yi plus h into vyi. So the, the basic methodology is exactly the same. Let's do a quick problem. A body is projected with a body projected with a horizontal velocity of 1 meter per second is moving under the influence of gravity. Tabulate the position and velocity for the first one second with an interval of 0.25 second. So what are the parameters given? Uh, the initial velocity in the x direction is 1 meter per second. In the y direction nothing is mentioned. So as always we take the initial velocity in positions as 0. So initial velocity in y direction is 0. And initial position in x and y directions are 0. And the body is moving only under the influence of gravity. So the, the force acting on it is the vertical, the vertical force, the gravitational force. So if I take the vertical direction as y direction, the corresponding acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. So Ay equal to 9.8 meter per second square. So this is the, the only acceleration uh, the body is having. So Ax equal to zero, there is no acceleration in the x direction because there is no force acting in that particular direction and the time window is one second we are asked to take a step size of 0 0.25 seconds so step one uh, step one is easy because we are just writing the the initial parameters so vx0 is 1 vy0 equal to 0 x0 equal to 0 and y0 equal to 0. So these are the initial parameters. In step 2, let's find velocities and position at 0 0.25 seconds. So vx 0 0.25 equal to vx0 which is 1 plus step size 0 0.25 into ax0 ax0 which is 0. So 1 plus 0 which is 1 and the position x of 0 0.25 equal to x0 which is 0 plus the step size 0 0.25 multiplied by uh, vx of 0 which is 1 sorry for the typo here this should have been 0 0.25 
So 0 plus 0 0.25, which is 0 0.25 here. Vy of 0 0.25 equal to Vy of 0, which is 0 plus step size into Ay0, which is 9.8. So you get a value 2.45. And y of 0 0.25 equal to y of 0, which is 0 plus step size. Once again, there is a typo here. This is 0 0.25 multiplied by vy0, which is 0 here. So this is 0 plus 0, 0. So there is a small error in the book. Uh, I have mentioned in the previous problem as well. So here you should use velocity in the previous steps, what uh, the author has taken velocity in the current step. So instead of 2.45, this should have been 0. So that's why when you look at it physically, there is a non-zero velocity, but the position hasn't changed. As I said before, this is the, the error associated with the numerical technique. And this error exists only in the first step. In the subsequent steps, you will find that the error gets compensated. That's why we say when you decrease the step size or when you increase the number of iterations, the accuracy of the final result will improve. Next, velocity and position at uh, 0 0.5 second. Just repeat the same thing. And here also, if you look at the y position, the same error is repeated instead of taking the velocity in the previous step the velocity in the current step is considered so you need to make the change and calculate the correct value finally you tabulate all the values time x velocity y velocity x position and y position so here uh, actually you don't have to calculate x velocity because uh, it is mentioned that uh, the acceleration in the x direction is zero. So what's the meaning of acceleration being zero? The corresponding velocity is a constant, right? Because acceleration is rate of change of velocity. So there is no change in the x velocity. Whatever is the initial velocity that is maintained in the subsequent steps. So you can write this even without making any calculation. Since x velocity is a constant, you can see that the change in x position is uniform. And these are the y velocities and corresponding y position. As I said, the, the calculator values are slightly wrong. You need to recalculate them. Finally, how to do the Python program. This is very similar to the, the program we have discussed in the earlier classes. So just that we have more number of parameters to input now. So previously we had only initial position and velocity. Now I have initial position velocity for both x and y direction. So I call it as x v x and y v y. I input parameters simultaneously using the split function. Then I input the time and step size. Initial acceleration the x direction is zero. I call it as a x and I equate it to 0, Ay equal to 9.8, initial time equal to 0. And I print the titles of the column, time, x velocity, y velocity, x position, y position. The initial values are already available here, so I print them straight away. Then I go to next step by incrementing the time by step size h. Now to calculate uh, the values in the further steps, I invoke a while loop, then inside the while loop I write the equation straight away x equal to x plus vx into h, y equal to y plus vy into h, and vx equal to vx plus ax into h, and vy equal to vy plus ay into h. As I said, you should always write the position equations first followed by velocity equation, otherwise what happens? The velocity gets modified first and the modified value of the velocity will be applied in the position equation. We don't want that to happen. We always take values from the previous steps. Okay. Then you print uh, the velocities and the position. Then you move to the next step by incrementing your time by steps. So you keep repeating this finally. When you reach the end of your range, you come out of the while loop and end the program. 
so that's for today in the next class we will see how to analyze projectile motion using audience method stay tuned thank you